Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video we're going to talk about records or structs in C++ and we've had, uh, when we talked about arrays, the distinction between simple or primitive types which only hold one value and structured types which hold multiple values and we talked about how arrays are a structured type because they hold multiple values. Well now we're going to talk about creating our own data types that can hold uh, multiple values but have a little bit more flexibility in some respects. And so a struct is actually a data type that is a collection of a fixed number of components called members and that are accessed by name. And so with an array, we access the elements by their index. In a struct, we access the members by their name. I'll show you the distinction uh, with an example. So here we've got some simple code, just a shell of a program. I'm going to define a new data type here. And so it's a good idea to put a comment above any new data type we define or struct. And so here we'll do that. We're going to have a data type that represents the information for a student uh, or for a set of students. And so we'll use the keyword struct to start out and then the name of our new data type, which is going to be student. And we'll start with a capital letter. First letter will be capital. That's a common convention for declaring new data types. We'll use a lowercase letter for uh, identifiers that are function names or for variable names that are not constant. Uh, and we'll use capital letters for new data types. And so here's our student struct. And we'll want to put a semicolon after the curly braces. And then inside the curly braces, we'll list out the members for this new data type. And so a student might have a first name and a last name and a GPA. So we'll declare those three members. So the string for the first name and string for the last name, that would make sense. And then let's use a double for the GPA. So that is our new data type. Now, remember, a data type doesn't hold a value or, or hold values, right? It defines what a value or a set of values could be. And so here we've defined that we can have student variables that can hold these three different things. And so like um, declaring an integer variable or uh, maybe a couple integer variables like we did here, we can now declare students. So our type is student and uh, spell it correctly. And then we could declare two students. So maybe stud one and stud two. Those are our two student variables here. So it's important to distinguish between the variable that holds the values and the type that defines what can be stored in these variables. So student is the type. This is a variable and this is a variable. Um, okay, so now how do you use these variables? Well, um, they have three different members that work exactly like uh, the strings and doubles we've seen before. And so we can say stud one, that's our first variable, and use the dot or member access operator to access the different members. So I can now say first name, and that is um, our member, and we can assign it a value. So let's assign this first name to be James, and then let's say stud one's last name can be Kirk. So here we've got um, a first name and last name assigned to our first student. And then stud one's GPA, we'll just say that's uh, 3.5. And so here we've accessed the three different members and we've initialized them to be a value. Now it's important to realize that uh, when you declare your studs, your students um, here, we have um, all three variables or all three members, but they don't have a specific value until we give them a value. So if I didn't set the GPA, we still have the GPA, but we haven't given a specific value yet. So it could be anything. Um, so it's important to remember that. Um, and then, you know, maybe we can output it or get input from the user, et cetera. Anything that we can do with a string, any other string variable, we can do with this first name of the student. Um, and anything we can do with a double, we can do with this here. And so we can use these using C in and C out, file in, file out. We can use them for comparisons, um, or we can use them as a whole, as a single student. Um, and there's some things we can do in aggregate, which is pretty cool. For example, we can say stud2 equals stud1. Uh, you can't do that with arrays, so we're uh, assigning the values of stud1 to be stud2. That means that it'll assign the first name of stud1 to be the first name of stud2, and the last name and GPA also. And so uh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty handy. So we can deal with these things uh, in aggregate when we're assigning values. Um, and we can output these things, but we can't just do C out stud one. And the reason for that is it doesn't know, you know, the computer doesn't know how you want that output. Do you want the first name first? Um, do you want spaces between them? Uh, it's just not, just not well defined. And so if we try to compile this, let me go to the compiler, go ahead and try to compile this. You see, you get a pretty long error message. And if I go to the top, you'll see that um, it's really long. 
I jump to the top, there we go. Uh, you can see that the error pointing is pointing to that uh, insertion operator there, and uh, you'll see it doesn't. It says no matching operator, uh, and it's the insertion operator. Where on the left you have an output stream, and on the right you have a student, and so it's saying I don't know how to do that. Um, so I'm going to go just go ahead and clear this error message, and we'll um, get rid of this here. Now you can do them member wise, so we can output. Um, our student like this. So this just says stud one's first name followed by space, stud two's last name uh, has a GPA of, and then stud one's GPA followed by a new line. And so we can do that um, individually, obviously, like we've done with strings and doubles before. Um, so now if I try to run it, um, you can see James Kirk has a GPA of 3.5. So pretty simple, pretty easy um, to do that. Um, obviously, we probably want to write a function to do our output, um, you know, not do everything in the main, uh, but we'll talk about that in the next video. Um, okay, let's make sure that our second student matches. So the copy uh, actually works. So I'm just going to copy and paste this, change the ones to twos here, and we should see, hopefully, um, Captain James Kirk um, well, not Captain, but James Kirk has a GPA twice. Yeah, so both those variables, stud1 and stud2. Stud1 got copied over to stud2 successfully um, on this line. So that's working. Now, uh, another aggregate operation that we you may wish you could do that can't you can't do is you can't say uh, stud1 is less than stud2. Again, the compiler, the computer, doesn't really know what you might mean there. What are you comparing? What needs to be less than? Is it the first name and then the last name, etc.? Um, same with equals equals. Um, doesn't really know how to handle that. And so if I try to compile it, get another really long error message. And if I go to the top, you can see um, it points to the equals equals and it says no operator equals equals that accepts a student on the left and a student on the right. That's just not defined. Now, um, in a later um, lecture, you might, uh, or uh, material, you might learn about how to overload these operators to support uh, your new data types. But as is, they're not built into the language. You can't do this. Uh, now, if you wanted to compare them, you want to know if they're exactly equal. Again, you can do that member wise. So we could do something like this, where we say stud one's first name equals stud one's last name and stud two's last name equals stud stud one's last name equals stud two's last name and stud one's GPA equals stud two's GPA. And so here I'm just outputting, if that's the case, the two students are the same. And so if we go back to our command line, compile it and uh, run it, you can see the two students are the same and sure enough, they're outputting the same exact values. So here we're defining what we mean by the same by using the comparisons. And if I change them, so if I say stud two, let's say the stud two's first name here um, is not James anymore. Let's say it's uh, Montgomery. Then obviously we shouldn't go into here. Um, and so we shouldn't get that message that the two students are the same. So if I go ahead and compile it, and run it, then you can see Montgomery Kirk has a GPA, but we don't see the message like we did before that the, the two students are the same because they're not. And so our comparisons are working. Um, we can also ask the user for input. So maybe we want to ask the user to enter their student information. Let me uh, get rid of these two lines here and we'll use student two. So we can say, see out, um, enter your first name, your first name. And we could say CN stud two dot first name. So we're using input here and accessing that member. Um, and we can say see out um, enter your last name, followed by the CN statement stud two dot last name. And then see out enter your current GPA CN stud two dot GPA. And uh, so that'll read in each in piece of information um, in aggregate and give us the appropriate output. Um, I should also point out, um, and I didn't do this earlier, I should include string here, right? Because we're using the string data types um, in these two variables here. Um, so it compiled, but it may not have if we hadn't fixed that, depending on your compiler. So now, Enter your first name, so I could put um, Sean, and I could put Hayes, GPA, perfect, right? <laughs> and you can see um, we don't get that they're the same, uh, but we get um, that that output for our stud two 
uh, right here. Now, um, if we let's go ahead and run it again, and we put James Kirk, and then we could put 3.5, and you can see we get the same output, and it does say um, that they. Um, oh, it doesn't match because I put James instead of James. Uh, let's try it one more time. So, James Kirk, 3.5. And there, now it says the two students are the same. Um, so we're getting the same output. So like I said, um, this is a string. And so um, even though it's inside our struct here, we can still do anything with a string um, that we can do with any other string. Um, and same with the double, uh, same with all of this. Um, and we can do one thing extra in aggregate. We can do assignment. So we can assign one student to another student in aggregate. Uh, but uh, we can't really do anything else in aggregate. We can't do aggregate comparisons. Um, we can't do aggregate output or input, uh, but we can do assignment. And this is really nice and really powerful. Now, obviously, we'll want to not do all this and everything with structs in main. And so the next step is to use functions. How do we uh, pass and uh, return uh, functions or structs from functions? And so check that out in the next video.